But if you mean macro, molecules to man without intelligent intervention from the goo to you via the zoo, I don't think that's true, okay? And the reason I don't, it's not because the Bible doesn't mention it, it's because I don't think it works. I, I just, I think there's evidence against it. Let me give you four quick uh, ways to look at the macroevolutionary issue. Uh, and it's in an acronym, LIFE, L-I-F-E. Evolution, a cornerstone of modern biology, or a flawed theory. Had about evolution, it doesn't work. And Frank is here to explain why, presenting four compelling reasons encapsulated in the acronym LIFE. From questioning the likelihood of life's origins to examining the intricacies of information in DNA, we're tackling the debate head on. But that's just the beginning dot by the end of this video. Not only will you have heard Turek's main arguments, but we'll also dive deeper, providing even more reasons to question the evolutionary narrative. Are you ready to challenge the status quo? Stay tuned. Sir, what's your name? My name's Jake. Jake, go yeah. ahead, sir. Uh, I just wanted to see if you could talk about like a couple points on evolution. Yeah. And one other small thing um, about why... Wait, evolution's not a small thing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no, so... No, that's the big one. All the, right, all right. the small one is uh, why the book of Enoch isn't included in the Bible. Oh, I'm not an expert on the book of Enoch, but I can tell you somebody who was, and that was Michael Heiser. Now, Dr. Michael Heiser died maybe six, eight months ago. Tragically, he had pancreatic cancer but he does something called the Naked Bible Podcast, and they're still putting out, they've had archived podcasts on that. And when I was with Michael at a conference maybe three or four years ago, I asked him about that. I said, what do you think about the Book of Enoch? Because he was an expert in it, written a commentary on it and everything. He said, I think there's good historical information in the Book of Enoch, but I don't think it's inspired. It will help you, give you an idea of what maybe the New Testament writers were thinking, but he doesn't think it's an inspired text, okay? Now, what about evolution? What was the issue about evolution? Uh, just if you could, it's not included in your presentation, uh -huh. so I just wanted to see if you had, like, what's your best evidence against uh, evolution? Okay, well, it depends on what kind of evolution you mean. If you mean micro, I believe in micro. Yeah. But if you mean macro, molecules to man without intelligent intervention from the goo to you via the zoo, I don't think that's <laughs> true, okay? And the reason I don't, it's not because the Bible doesn't mention it, it's because I don't think it works. I, I just, I think there's evidence against it. Let me give you four quick uh, ways to look at the macroevolutionary issue. Uh, and it's in an acronym, LIFE, L-I-F-E. L stands for limits to genetic change. For example, um, we know, breeders know, that they can't break the genus of, say, the canine. They can breed all sorts of dogs, as small as a Chihuahua, as large as a Great Dane, but they can't break that genetic limit. If intelligent minds can't break genetic limits, why do we expect non-intelligent processes to do so? And by the way, they've done the same things about fruit flies. They've tried to modify fruit flies, and what do they get? They just get mutated fruit flies. And they're using all of their intelligence to do it. They can't break genetic limits. That's the L. The I stands for irreducible complexity which Michael Behe made famous back in a book from 1996 called Darwin's Black Box. In Darwin's day, he didn't know what was in the cell. Now we know the cell is just a blizzard of complexity that is so interconnected and complex that you can't modify one part without shutting down the whole cell. All the parts would need to be modified at the same time to have any function. It's irreducibly complex. And so it doesn't appear that gradualism works. And as Richard Daw Dawkins famously said, if we don't have gradualism, we're back to a miracle. That's irreducible complexity. The F stands for the fossil record. The fossil record does not comport with gradualism. The fossil record, particularly the Cambrian explosion, which apparently occurred about 538 million years ago, according to their dating, was an explosion of 20 of, out of the 28 major body plants, the phyla, appear in the geologic strata just fully formed with no fossil precursors. Even Dawkins says it looks like they were just placed there. In other words, it comports better with a creation or intelligent design than it does a gradual process. If everything is ancestrally related and it went through all these transitionary forms, we should find millions of transitionary fossils, but we don't find them. And then the E stands for epigenetic information. 
Epigenetic information is the idea that you can't mutate DNA and get a new body plan. You have to have the structure uh, change as well, and DNA doesn't change the structure. That's the epigenetic information. This is a more recent discovery, and probably the best resource on this right now would be Stephen Meyer's book, uh, either uh, Darwin's Doubt or a Return of the God Hypothesis. Either of those two books will help you and expound all those areas, by the way. So limited genetic change, irreducible complexity, fossil record, and epigenetic information. And there are other reasons. I just don't think macroevolution works. And even if it does work, the very laws that drive it require a mind to drive it. So you're not getting rid of God, even if macroevolution is true. Okay? Yeah, awesome. Thank all right, you. Thank you. In examining the question of evidence against evolution, it is important to consider various perspectives within science. Critics of evolution often present arguments centered around concepts such as irreducible complexity, gaps in the fossil record, convergence in evolution, genetic information, the anthropic principle, evolutionary psychology, molecular machines, the origin of life, directed panspermia, and ethics. While these arguments do not encompass the full scope of the debate, they highlight important areas of discussion. One argument against evolution is the concept of irreducible complexity. This argument suggests that certain biological systems could not have evolved gradually because they require all their components to be present in order to function. Critics contend that this implies the existence of a designer or creator. Another point raised is the existence of gaps in the fossil record. Critics argue that these gaps challenge the idea of gradual evolution as they do not provide a complete and continuous lineage for all species. Related to this is the concept of convergence in evolution. Convergence refers to the phenomenon where unrelated species independently evolve similar traits or structures. Some argue that this suggests the existence of a common designer rather than common ancestry. The complexity of genetic information and the mechanisms of genetic variation also pose challenges to the concept of random mutations and natural selection as the sole driving forces of evolution. Critics argue that the presence of intricate genetic codes points to a purposeful design. The anthropic principle is another point of consideration. It suggests that the universe and its physical laws are precisely fine-tuned to support the existence of life. Some interpret this as evidence for a deliberate, intelligent creator. Critics also question the validity of evolutionary psychology, which seeks to explain human behavior and cognition through evolutionary processes. They argue that it disregards the spiritual and moral aspects of human nature, originated from an extraterrestrial source deliberately seeding our planet. This concept challenges the idea of purely naturalistic evolution. Lastly, critics argue that the concepts of morality and ethics cannot be fully explained by evolutionary processes alone, as they require a transcendent source of moral values. It is important to note that these arguments are not exhaustive, and there are varying opinions within Christianity regarding the compatibility of evolution and faith. Christians believe that God is the ultimate source of all creation and may interpret scientific evidence through the lens of their faith. In conclusion, the evidence against evolution, as presented by critics, revolves around concepts such as irreducible complexity, gaps in the fossil record, convergence in evolution, genetic information, the anthropic principle, evolutionary psychology, molecular machines, the origin of life, resurrected panspermia, and ethics. These arguments prompt further exploration and dialogue on the relationship between science and faith. Christians embrace the belief that God is the ultimate source of all creation, and they may interpret scientific evidence through the lens of their faith while engaging in respectful discussions with others.